So, you start any scene in Blender, and you're done adding your magic to it, the next step for you is to test render it in the viewport, and this process can sometimes become annoying with the time it takes if you leave the settings on default, and to keep your emotions under control, we made this video, and in it, we will see how we can cut down the viewport render time by optimizing the display option, so out of the door, when you set the scene to render with cycles, you will have it put on the CPU device, the viewport samples count was 32 before, however, since Blender 3 this number is set to 1024 by default, so let us set a timer and see how much the vanilla settings take to render the viewport. And as you see this viewport render took 1 minute 21 seconds which is way too long, the first thing to cut the render time is setting the right device, so we need to change it from CPU to GPU and make it render with the graphic card, make sure to set the system settings on CUDA to enable the device render, and here is my graphic card name, it should be checked by default once you switch to it. Now let us make it on GPU and see how much time we can save. It took us 20 seconds to render the viewport with the graphic card, which is 6 times faster than before, that's quite a huge cut, the second thing we need to optimize is the max samples count, as we said in default they made it on 1024. And that's way too much samples for a test render, now how much do we need, it really come back to the projects, in general, when we are talking about architecture scenes like this one, a sample count around 15 is more than enough, I usually keep it under 20 for the max viewport samples, and that's from my experience, I had blender crashing in some cases and all of them were with sample count over 20. So try it if you want and see how it works with you, for me 20 is enough for a test render, and as you see we cut the render by a huge amount. Next step for us is the denoising, and this process will for sure add some time to the viewport render because we now need to render the view and make it noise free, or something like that, so it will take more than the last time, now with the denoising, you have three options, auto, optics, and the open image, each of them have a different time depending on your graphic card, I did experience with it and find out that optics works better for Nvidia card which happens to be the one I use, and you see now, denoising the scene cost us double the time, we went from 5.7 second to around 10, so how we can get the best of both the render and the denoising process. The best thing here is to make the denoising start later in the rendering process, and we do that from this value, so with the max samples on 15, we can make the denoising start from 12, and let us see how much time the render take. So it took us 6.5 seconds which is cool and we can see the render with a nice look, and that quite the improvement from the number we started with. We went from a minute 21 seconds to 6.5 seconds, and that's not all, here are some tips to keep in mind, while moving in the viewport, you might feel some lagging in the process, to get rid of it, try to turn off the overlays, I really don't know why but it works all the time even with big scenes, this won't speed the render process but will get you a smooth navigation around the viewport render. Another thing to pay attention to is this one, if you're working on a specific area, to add details or to model a new object, you can use the render region by hitting Ctrl B and selecting any area in the viewport, like here if I want to work on this table, there's no need to render this corner, so I can press Ctrl B and select the area around the table, and with that we are for sure saving time. You can also move around the render region as you want and zoom in and out from the object you have focused on, you can hit Ctrl B again and override the render region and scale down its area or expand it as needed, once you're done focusing on the table, you can reset it back to full screen render by hitting Ctrl, 
out and be. Last thing we need to mention here is minimizing the render area, meaning if you want to keep the viewport render on, you don't need it on full screen or taking the entire workspace. We can split the work area and assign a small portion of it to show the test render, the smaller the render area, the faster it's done. I usually when I have both the shading and the UV opened, the only place to keep it on render is the top right corner, and we don't need to see the layers all the time, a quite small place for fast test renders. Now if you are on camera view, and I always recommend my viewers to keep working from the camera view since it's the one we're getting the image from in the final render, so to keep this render view as fast as possible, we need to cut all the areas outside the camera frame from rendering, and we can do that with one of two options, so in the scene setting, under the resolution, we can check the render region box, and this will make the render process inside the camera frame only, However with this option, it can cause some problems with animation render, and that happened when you do animation and PNG sequences, so to avoid that, there's another way to cut the area outside the camera frame from rendering, and we can find this option in the camera settings, under the viewport display tab, look for the pass part out and make it on one, and that's it, both have the same result, there are also things to pay attention to like instance copies, linked objects, optimizing the map resolution and other things that need a separate tutorial to cover, but for now, keep the things we mentioned today in mind and try to keep it smooth in your viewport, so that's what I got for you today, remember to subscribe if you haven't yet, and see you soon, stay sharp guys, goodbye.